Alrighty, Let's see if we got all this working. New setup. New video series that we got going on, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully, everybody is doing great. This is Justin Martinez, aka J the Sports Dude, coming to you all live from my apartment. Hopefully, you all are staying at your homes as well, practicing social distancing and staying safe during this pandemic. And I'm here to provide you all with a brand new video series. That's right. Shout out to everybody who was tuning in to our virtual season for New Mexico State on NBA 2K20. It was a month-long journey. And if you guys want to go back and watch that, all of the games unedited are here on the YouTube channel. But now it's time for something different, guys. We are watching real-life New Mexico State basketball. This is about as close as we can get during the quarantine. We're watching last season's game, one game every night for about a month, probably. It's going to be a very long journey, but I'm looking forward to sitting down and watching and talking Aggie hoops with you guys. Shout out to everybody who is tuning in already, whether you're watching this live right now or playing back. I appreciate it, guys. And tonight, we are kicking things off with the season opener. It is a game against Western New Mexico, the Broncos. I'm sorry, the Mustangs. Um, yeah, and this is at the Pan American Center. This was my very first game covering the New Mexico State Aggies. For those who don't know, this is my first year on the beat. And we're going to go get started, guys. Like I said, 6 p.m. Mountain Time every single night. That's what we're going to be doing for this. But I want to put out a disclaimer really quick. Not all of the games are available on YouTube. The way that I've been finding this right now is through um, NM State Aggie Athletic Archives. It's their YouTube channel, and they actually have the most, the majority of these games. They're missing a couple ones that were on the road. They're missing Arizona. Um, I believe they're missing Mississippi State. And then they're also missing uh, Northern New Mexico, I think, which was the last game of non-conference play. So there's a couple that we're going to miss, but for the most part, we are going to be able to watch pretty much all the games this season. And I'm looking forward to kicking off this journey, guys. But that is enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started right now. And uh, since we are in the kind of experimental process of this, it is a different setup from the gaming uh, videos. Let me know if I need to turn my audio down. Let me know if I need to turn up the game audio. You guys go ahead and let me know that, and we'll just adjust it um, as this continues. But that's enough talking, I promise. Uh, we have an hour and 13 minutes of basketball ahead of us, so let's get started. To jump center for the Western New Mexico Mustangs, Rodney Simon, 6'9", for Austin. And Trevlin Queen will jump for the Aggies, he's 6'7". As you all know, got these straight to the cup here. The rest of the starters for the Mustangs. Uh, Tony Avalos, 5'10", sophomore, went to Las Cruces, Odiante, will be a uh, work guard. All right, so like I said, this was my first game covering the Aggies. I was really excited for this one. Um, still love the home environment over there. It's a great atmosphere. Yeah. Looks like they got Trev tipping off. I don't remember. That's not a normal thing, right? Is it, it, might, it might just be that long that I've forgotten. I feel like Trev doesn't usually... Um, Tip off, so that's interesting. See, I think he won this, yeah. Okay. There we go. Sean Buchanan walking up the court. As you guys know, he was the, the starter. He held down the fort while A.J. Harris was injured and before Evan was eligible. Pretty much all of non-conference play, he was the guy. Cool up, Trev, got it. Seal is broken. Good and shot. Trevlin Queen gives the Aggies a two point lead. And I know it's early, but that shot right there that Trevlin just took, we talked about this last year. This was something that he wanted to add into his game that so This is a. Uh, Out in front, Omarion Cash, cut off by an Queen. NAIA so squad in Western Smith, New Mexico. Outside to Avalos. Avalos, right of the lane to Simon. Simon brings it inside. Floater rattles out. And I do have the box score here on my phone as well. So I'll be able to. Um, nice find. I'll be able to kind of have a little bit of a refresher because obviously I don't remember all the stats from every single game. That would be insane here. Um, but yeah, I have that pulled up here. And then also I have my phone right underneath the camera right here. Um, which is the comment the section. So if you guys want to comment, feel free Avalos. to chat with me. Talk a little bit of Aggie man. hoops. Top of the circle, the ball goes to Cash. Cash drives on Queen, loose the ball. Now picks up his dribble, shoots over Queen, shot not good. Rebound tipped, it's loose on the floor, run down by Sean. Good hustle there by Sean. Saves it to Ivan, now back to Buchanan. Buchanan on the fly 
Sean Williams still in the transfer portal, hasn't committed to any new team yet. On Trey Smith. Um, what are you seeing so far, Hawk? Uh, I hate to see him go. I saw a little bit of Sean Williams the, slander on his way out, man. And I, I think it was a little perfect. unjust. I heard a lot of people uh, saying it was mostly on like Facebook, which, offense, to be uh, fair, uh, there are a lot of people on Facebook that uh, have some pretty controversial opinions. So I usually don't put too much weight into uh, the comment section there. But we got some people saying that you know he just wasn't meant for the Christian system and all this. I don't think that was accurate at all. Um, I think he was a good spot at shooting. He needed to work on his consistency. But uh, still had plenty of value on the team. And I think he would have been a really good um, off the bench spark plug this season. But he ultimately said he, he left to um, be closer to family. So he wasn't as far away. He is from Arkansas. I believe Little Rock. But it will not count. As a charging foul called on Tony Avalos. And that is the second foul of the Mustang. Gives the ball back to New Mexico. I'm noticing State. that the scoreboard is updated here. Scoreboard where nobody beats a Cisparo deal. I'm assuming you that will get fixed at some point. <laughs> the lob! Oh! Can't get the, dunk. the ball is loose. And it's recovered by Western. Back to I was going to say, I didn't remember that lob. I feel like I would have remembered that if that went down. Avalos drives on Williams. Can't penetrate. Bounce pass to Simon. Simon dogged outside by Bob. I think he's coming out more aggressively now on defense. Goes back to Avalos, working on Sean Williams. Avalos stays beyond the three point Ooh, arc. Takes the three. It's not mm -hmm. good. About third by Queen. Out the pass to Buchanan. Sam's got to already have what? Three ending. rebounds. Buchanan takes it left of late. Lob inside for Yvonne. Yvonne baseline left gets around. Simon brings it inside. Shot is blocked, but he's fouled. Getting the line. Yvonne, Free throws here. This is where Yvonne. Really struggled this past year. I want to say he was in the uh, high 60s. One thing you marked about last year about Yvonne was his footwork. And I was just Which is a step down. It's not that he can't hit free throws. He was shooting in the in the 70s last season, season four. But um, I don't know what it was. He just lacked the focus at the line. He did. He did pick it up later in the season, so that was good to see. Um, makes his first free throw. He was fouled in the yeah, early on in the year, he was, he was really struggling at the line. Let's see if he makes this one here. Free throw shooter last year. And his second attempt is Got good. it. Nine nothing. Aggies pitching a shutout here. So it's nine minutes. nothing right now. I'm assuming the scoreboard's going to <laughs> get fixed at some point here. Day. But it is nine nothing with it looks like 17 minutes exactly right clock. Three point shot from and on the shot. Shout out to everybody Yvonne. tuning in again, whether it's live or playback. I appreciate y'all. Nice find to CJ. Also, another guy who started off the year in the uh, first and unit, CJ Bobbitt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send out a. Let's see, so far the Yankees haven't missed a shot. Let me see, can I upload the thumbnail from here? The Aggies haven't missed a shot, and Western hasn't been So, as y'all can see, I have the live stream here on my phone. They look really confident. They look like a team that has. It's a new setup. When I was live streaming the 2K games, it was through my TV, and now I'm here on my laptop. Van Beek have inbounds the ball to Avalos. We're back. I'm just sending out a post on our Facebook group right now to let them know that we are live. Stolen by Queen. Queen just elevated and stole the ball as it was released from the other player's hands. To Buchanan in the middle for Yvonne. Yvonne takes it down low. Can't get the shot. It's stolen by Van Beek. That's the first turnover in the game. And back comes Western. Tony Avalos moves against Sean Williams. Aggies haven't substituted so far. Left in lane for Trey Smith. Out on top now for Van Beekham. Van Beekham between the circles. Right in lane against the ball to Avalo. Shot clock at 13. Now to Cash. 15 footer right side. Not good. Rebound cleared down low by the Yankees. Bob at the rebound. 11 0 New Mexico State. The lead fans are still standing. Every team has to score. Three from Queen. Left corner. No. Weak side rebound for Bobbitt. Bobbitt. Bob's baseline right for Yvonne. Yvonne there brings it inside, loses the dribble, recovers, lays it up. No, no, a missed dunk by Queen, recovered by Yvonne, and he dunks it. I should have done this before the stream, so my that bad, guys. Size is just, I think it's going to be a little bit too much for Western tonight. Size and athleticism. Avalos drives right side against Buchanan. Johnny McCann's ready to come on for the Aggies. Avalos outside, right in the lane now for Van Beekham. Western lost a heartbreaker in the season opener at Española against Northern New Mexico. 
Left the lane to three on the way. Not good for the cash. Rebound goes out of bounds. Touch last by Simon. And now the Yankees go to their bench for the first time. Johnny McCants enters. Johnny and Eric Cosmos got that posted. Alum. Also, Scoreboard is updated too. Chris, a 13 and nothing. Aggies. We got our first comment from Tobias Rodriguez. From this game, I knew Rice was going to have a good year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, lead scorer in the game, I think. I want to say it was about 21 points or 20 points. Let me see. I have the box score here. 21 points, yeah. And it's a. Uh, it's funny because obviously you know, I'm not trying to I don't want to be that guy who's like I told you so all that kind of stuff but I had been reporting um, about a week or so prior to the start of the season saying hey you know look out for Jabari and uh, there, were, there were some comments there were some people um, thinking that I was maybe valuing him a little too highly but you know, he came out and I think really got people's attention deep three by Trey Thank you for tuning in, though, Tobias. Appreciate it. I did use your question again uh, for the interview with um, why am I blanking with Jabari today? Hit the three there. Yeah. So I, I went in and I used your question again. I might have to chill on using your questions. I don't want to use the same guy every single time. But hey, you you ask really good questions, man. So, <laughs> so I went in and I used it again. Um, but yeah, that was a great interview. Um, got to talk to Jabari for I want to say about it's a little less than 20 minutes for the interview today, and that'll be released on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, episode number five of Stray Shooter with Jabari. Uh, Tobias says, thank you. I figured you might have to use someone else. Yeah, but um, I don't know. There's a lot of people who, like, I, you know, I appreciate anybody who's reaching out to me because to me the most rewarding part of of journalism in general is feedback with the community. So, like, I appreciate anybody who's commenting, sending questions, anything like that but there are some that like you kind of get a sense that the players aren't going to give the answer that they're looking for um like there's a couple where they're like can you predict the starting five or who do you think uh which new guy do you think is going to have the biggest impact it's like after i guess talking to players enough you kind of already know they're not going to they're not going to answer those kinds of questions, so I tend to just not choose them. But yeah, the ones that you've asked have, have led to really great responses, so shout out to you, man. Stays outside. Johnny likes that three-point shot. He does. I, 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 you see so Johnny with the three-ball there. Um, you know, before the season, but um, you know, another Part year. Part of this what makes to, him so dangerous. Hopefully, it helps him out. Western. Ooh. Gets the ball inside. Is that like a pass at the last second? That was interesting. But yeah, the interview with Jabari today, um, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. I haven't looked through all of the audio yet, but I want to say it's good. But we did have a couple times where we had to hang up, like end the video session and start a new one. So I've got some editing to do. I think it's going to come out okay, um, but it is a hilarious interview. We we talked about so many things that were funny, man. I, I can't wait for y'all to see that on Wednesday. I don't know if it's if I rank it above the one with Evan, because that's just a classic to me, but it's up there. It's up there. Now back to Jabari. Rice holding the ball outside, left the lane Got for Trey. Trey with the ball here. To three. Early Green's minutes for feet. Will. Saved by McNair, throws it back outside. Ooh. Saved by McCants, but it goes out of bounds off Johnny. And will belong to the Western New Mexico Mustang. Because I can't wait until Wednesday to listen to it. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be great. Were, I, I mean, I, I know what Trevlin was trying to do there, but... Um, the angle that he threw that and a little sneak peek, Jabari uh, went ahead and nominated and William dribbled, McNair, so you know, the lower free throw line, um, I'm going to reach out to the team and hopefully make that happen. That so back. right now, tentatively, well, the plan is for William McNair to be the, the guest right for the episode 6 of Straight Shooter. Crazy, we're already on episode 6. 
He's right in the lane to it's Sanders. been going by fast, man. Sanders I'm, I'm having a blast to here. I love the video content as opposed to like the podcast. I think it's a lot of fun, and I think you guys are enjoying it too. Our views have been crazy for it so far. Like I'm talking two or three times more views than the straight shooter podcast. So, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. I like how this video is cutting out some of these breaks because I was kind of worried about that. I was like, am I going to have to sit down for all the timeouts and everything? But it looks like they shortened it. So that's solid. Because this video is about an hour, 13 minutes, which is pretty much how long our 2K streams were. So that's good. That's a bad pass there by Johnny. Nice block by Trev. That time was Smith, or rather Hudson. Just the athleticism of Trev, man. And one by Jabari. Jabari Rice goes coast to coast, lays it in, and he's fouled. That's strength, man. That's all. All that comes from staying home. I mean, staying in Crucis over the summer. Adding some weight, getting quicker. His finishing ability, I think, was his, his biggest improvement this year. His steps to the basket, I, I saw him a lot this summer working out with him. Uh, you know, his Euro steps to the basket. He had and he is still in Cruces, Jabari is. I think so he is staying. He said that he went home um, to visit family in Houston for like a week or so. Uh, but he's back. So he, he is staying in Cruces for the, the summer. I believe that's what your question was, Tobias, or part of it. And the throw is not good. But he told me that like off the, off camera, but just thought I'd share that. I feel like all of these plays defensively, Trev is effective. Really good self defense by Trev. His closeout speed, his length. I think he's a pretty underrated receiver. Obviously, people know that he's a bucket, but, but he really impacts both ends of the court. And I think that's what's really going to help out his stock because there's a lot of bucket getters in, in college basketball. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of bucket getters that transfer to the NBA and doesn't transfer well. You know? Rice. But the thing is, you just can't be a liability on defense end because then it doesn't matter how good of a scorer you are, you know? At some point in the first two months of the season. Trev is, Trev is good, man. He's a good defender. He, 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 has, he has no problem with starting somebody else different every, every Stephen M., welcome to the live stream, man. He says, who won this game? <laughs> yeah, it's a NMSC by a bit. I don't know if y'all want spoilers or not. I can look up the score. I honestly forgot it. It was a blowout. Uh, score of this one. 92 to 46 NMSC. I have the box score here on my phone. Uh, Tobias, Trev's closeout speed was something else, especially towards the end of the season. He was keeping, yeah. yeah. And I think what was impressive was towards the end of the season is that, is that um, despite the injuries, he still has just such great speed. Man, like. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. You see, some of this is still new to me, man. Good hustle by Jabari. I didn't show him that play uh, during the interview I had with him today, but I showed him a play where he got, uh, I think, like two offensive rebounds and again against Denver. The way he crashes the glass, man, I think that's so invaluable, especially as a guard. Because the Mexico State's offensive rebounding numbers really went up and down this season. Like, at their peak, they were averaging about 13 a game during non-conference play. But then once black play started, they had so many games of single-digit offensive rebounds, and it affected them, man. It, it's free points, you know? And I think Jabari is a really big X factor for them, the amount he crashed with glass. But yeah, Trev's closeout yeah, speed, I think, is as oh, good as it no, gets in the whack, for sure. Went, on that foul, on that player control um, foul, they his perimeter defense they in general. Throws on those. No, I, and I knew um, that. That's, 
Yeah, I know, man. I think he's, I think he's really well balanced, and I think that's what's going to really help him uh, help his draft stock as opposed to the fact that he's a he's a bucket. You know? Got Stephen M saying, any updates on Jaquan Scott? I wish, man. I wish. Uh, still just waiting on him to make his decision until he does, and it's just kind of everybody's waiting. Um, I'm still, I still have his post notifications nice turned on on Twitter, so I've been seeing all of his tweets. He doesn't but really tweet that often, but um, literally if he tweets something out, like within the first two seconds I see, because I'm always on my phone, whether it be for work or just personal, I'm always on my phone, so as soon as I see a tweet from Jaquan Scott, the swipe, I open it up, I see it's not a commitment, and I exit out, so I'm trying to be on top of it, but... And I mean, I at the end of the day, until he decides, we're all just waiting. Another one of these seasons where it's going to be tough for Coach Jans. You know, he's going to have to rotate a lot of guys, but I think that's what he likes to do. Bob, it makes both ends of the free throw. CJ got the free throws. Aggies up now 27 to 3. 27 to 3. Bring the ball back for Aggies in this one. McDougal drives the ball in the middle, keeps driving on Buchanan. His layup is not good. Rebound cleared by Brown. Got a little Robert Brown, Brown, Brown QT. Buchanan chased by McDougal. McDougal to steal. Who also uh, entered the transfer portal and actually committed in the front court and to Iona. Call for a charge on the drive. Way to take that charge, Mr. Barry. Tristan Moore. That's a tough thing to do, man. Especially when it's a bigger guy barreling down the lane to just post up and take the hit. I did not take a lot of charges back in my day. In my day of basketball playing. So no free throws. Uh, Tobias says, I remember that Western New Mexico point guard having B1 speed. Um, I was surprised it was that Western. Yeah. Um, Tony Avalos, I think, is his name. And let's check the box score. Looks to pass, now brings it in the middle, loses his dribble, turn around, hook shot, and air ball. Yeah, he did have a really good first step, especially. Foul call down low. McDougal and Jabari Rice are both trying to get the rebound. Uh, I guess it's not Tony Avalos. Foul. I can't find his name. It's called on Western New Mexico. We'll see it here, but. but yeah, man. I mean, there's supers everywhere. Foul. No, Tony was hurt. So he didn't play. Dinell okay, yes, for wasn't. Foul, uh, McDougal, so got gotcha. you. Who's two of three at the free throw line? Will have two more attempts. Got gotcha. you. Aggies doing a good job at the line so far tonight. Six of seven. And now seven of eight. What did the Aggies shoot from the free throw season last year? About 68%. Barry at the line. Which is better than some years, but I'm sure not really what Coach wanted. No, not at all. Next throw from Jabari is good. Yeah, he had these 20 Jabari points off the bench. Jabari six points in first half. Aggies up 29 to three. Way to just get everybody's attention. Again, I know it's in, I know it's Western New Mexico that they're playing, but to put up 20 points off the bench for Jabari, this was a really good game, I think, from confidence-wise. Ooh, nice move. Cross-court pass is not good, but is, is Brown with the charge? Brown it is, draws the charge from Good stuff from Brown. And... That will be McDougal's yeah, I like second. Robert Brown's game. I thought that a good job by the, uh, he was still a little bit underdeveloped in terms of his footwork. I think no, he could have uh, improved on that. I but so young, man. Really this is his retro uh, freshman year. I think that I think he's going to be good for Iona. I know they brought in a lot of guys at Iona. You know, once Rick Pitino is a coach, uh, recruiting, you're able to bring in some better names. So I don't know what his role on the team is going to be because there's a lot of new guys in the mix, but I think Robert Brown is a good young player. Really good dude, too. Really nice guy. Um, I've kind of been doing this thing recently, um, just off the clock, where I think it started with Sean Williams once he entered the transfer portal. Back he Bob reached out to me, he messaged Bob me on Twitter, and he was like, hey, Williams can you uh, put eight together eight like some highlights for me? So I could use it as like a, a mixtape or whatever. Uh, so I was like, yeah, sure. So I went in and I did that for him. I put together maybe about 20 plays or so throughout the season. And then um, 
And then Robert Brown, I don't know if Sean told him, like, hey, uh, you know, Justin might be willing to do this for you, but uh, he reached out to me too and asked for me to, to put together some highlights, so I did that for him too. Um, I mean, I didn't have to, it's, it's off the clock and everything, and it does take a little while because I go through all of these videos. But, you know, anything I can do to help these guys, it's their careers for a lot of these guys, it's their livelihood, what they're hoping to make careers out of, so. So I didn't mind doing it. And Robert Brown, that was the first time I'd actually talked to him was when he reached out. So he was really nice to him. He was really appreciative. So wishing him and uh, Sean Williams the best. goes all the way back to the midcourt line. 7.36 to go first half. As McDougal drives, he is held on the drive by New Mexico State's C.J. Bobbitt. So 29 to 6 with 7.33 left. Um, is the audio good with all of this, guys? Like, can y'all... Am I too low? The game audio need to be raised? Feel free to let me know. Do I just maybe need to talk a little bit louder? I don't know if I'm talking loud or not. Back out in front to Williams, left in lane for Buchanan. Playing off him is Donnell. Top of the circle. Trev, catch and shoot. Got it. Three for Trev. It doesn't even look like he's trying. He just is so he's smooth. Such a he's so effortless. He's, uh, he's a great player. I don't even know what else to say about him. McDougal, left in lane for Donnell. Game audio might be a little high. On Williams, comes okay. down the lane, collides with Bobbitt. I'll just turn it down one. You can let me know if maybe I do need to do a little bit more. Donnell picks up the personal. That's his second. So now four different Western New Mexico players have two fouls each in this first half. Because I don't want to be talking for like an hour and a half and then go back and watch this and I just sound like like I'm just mumbling. And Sean will be the point guard. We've seen Jabari Rice run the offense tonight. Yeah, we have a very uh, makeshift setup here. So I've got my laptop on top of two shoe boxes here on my coffee table in my living room. And then, oh, three ball, CJ, no good. And uh, the whole screen is just the game. I can't see myself on my laptop. That's why I have my YouTube live stream here on my phone right in the me. <laughs> so I'm like constantly looking down every now and then just to make sure that I'm in the screen, which I think I'm doing a decent job of. I think I'm a little bit close to the top of it, but I can't see that. So <laughs> it's a little unusual setup. But I think it's working. All right, uh, Tobias says I think it's good there. Cool. Appreciate you helping me out. Foul goes against Barnes. It's his first, and the Yankees are the double bonus. I see you at the line again. Bob will go to the line. Western's coach still unhappy. Yeah, it's probably a little bit of frustration, you know, with I saw um, and everything. AJ Harris sent out a tweet today uh, that was well, anyway, a little uh, it's tough when your team's down by a little vague. Right. It was, I think, the emoji of the eyes, a basketball emoji, and then a clock emoji. So, like, basketball time? I don't know. We're still waiting to hear on if he gets his X year of eligibility. I don't know if he's maybe hinting towards something. Um, we'll see. I'm still waiting. Also, um, I've, I've got some people telling me that they're expecting to know a little bit more about next season's schedule. Sometime this week we'll get more information. I don't know if that means the whole schedule. Pull up by Sean. Got it. I don't know if that means the whole schedule or just if we'll get a couple more dates. But we will get something at some point this week. We'll get a little bit more information. So as soon as that happens, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Put out an article on it. And uh, once we have the whole uh, the whole schedule, I'll actually go through and predict every single game, which I did last season. I need to go back and see how, how accurate I was from last season. I don't think I was that far off. I don't think I was. But, um, but yeah, I'll go through and do that again once the schedule is already out. Last time that we had this configuration, Jabari ran the offense. And he and Sean are both out there. So we'll see if that's the case when the Aggies have the ball. <clears throat> Bounce pass goes to McDougal. 
McDougal moving tentatively at top of the circle. The ball goes to Barnes. Barnes back to McDougal. Ball Good D, the Kim. Mississippi menace. Has it to Johnny, right of the lane now for Queen. Queen drives and took some little steps, but apparently didn't travel. It's left just the little Rice. things, man, that Sean does. Rice that. Baseline left for Yvonne, back to, to me, Rice. he's one of my favorite players to watch on the team. And it's Western's ball. <laughs> They're just little steps. Then. Right, if the ref doesn't call it, though, it's not a trial. <laughs> That's can't what be. I would say. That can't be. Donnie Tillman signing. Will he play this year? Still unsure. Uh, don't forget to smash the like button. Yes, everybody please smash the like button. Um, they're still unsure right now. The only guys they know for sure will be playing is Kalen Williams and CJ Roberts because they both came in from Chico. So they're both immediately eligible. Everybody else, it's going to be a matter of getting a waiver. Or an exception, kind of like what happened with Evan. Because uh, Evan wasn't supposed to play last season, but he was deemed eligible right before the start of conference play. So there are a lot of question marks, but um, in the offseason, we'll get a little bit more clarity on stuff. Except for Marcus break. Watson and Mayan Kerr, since and they both so committed earlier on, because um, you need a full right year of being at the school, the so they'll be eligible at the start of the spring semester, which is about conference right play. Corner. When Evan came in last season, corner three, three got and it, and one Jabari Rice. So Caleb Williams immediately Fouled eligible, CJ Roberts Leonard immediately Leonard eligible. Western. Marcus Watson and Mayan Kerr uh, started the spring semester. And then Jacob Tryon. Who else is there? Uh, Donnie Tillman. And who else am I forgetting? The rest of the guys. I'm sorry, I'm blanking right now. The rest of the guys are actually going to need an exception. And we'll, it's just pending What's right now. What's his strongest suit here? His athleticism, his size, um, uh, also his heart. Um, I, I mentioned earlier he plays with a lot of hustle, but offensively he can do a lot of things. You see him running, he's playing point guard now. Um, he's shooting the ball. Uh, a Jason lot King. Than he Jason did, King uh, is going to be. Year. And uh, he can really get some capacity too. So. He knocks down the free throw. Jason King is going to be eligible. Play. Jabari had a problem last year with that. fouling, but a lot of freshmen do. I was talking to Dan the other day, and I went in line. Rolled it all down. Between the circles to Barnes, and they get the ball down low to a driving Dinell, and a blocking foul called on the Aggies inside. Foul called on Sean Buchanan. That's the first on Sean, and the third on the Aggies. Okay. C.J. Roberts eligible. Jason King eligible. Kalen Williams eligible. Marcus Watson, uh, spring semester, Mayan Kerr, spring semester. Donnie Tillman, listed as maybe in parentheses, barring a waiver. And Jacob Tryon, maybe barring a waiver. So, so that's where we're at with things right now. And then they also mentioned still waiting on AJ Harris. So. Rashawn G. Rashawn G is eligible. He redshirted last season. So, so he is in the mix. Another tough layup. Like I said, that's strange. Got 15 points. Pardon me, 14 points. The Aggies are up 43 to 10. In front court, McDougal. Sneed State Community. Are you talking about? Sneed State. Is that? That's Jason King, right? Pretty sure. You're talking about Jason King. Yeah, you can hear. I, 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 you know, a couple times. Yeah, it's a little hard to keep up with all of them. Just there's been so much going on with transfers this summer, this off season. But as of right now, how I just listed it off, that's that's all we know right now. He's back on the attack in front court. Sean Buchanan left of the lane, drives on McDougal, now brings it back to Rick Quitsay on the left angle. 
Cannon comes across the middle, picks up his dribble, and he's called for travel. Ooh, got that to go, though. So the Mustangs for Sean into yeah, Trevor's on fire in this game. The ball back. It's the ninth turnover in this first half. And Tennessee Owens will enter the game now. Tennessee, a walk-on. He went to Centennial High. And his dad is Casey Owens, who's the director of operations for the Mexico State. 43 to 10 right now with 318 left. And he will be, uh, he's a backcourt player. He took Buchanan's place. And I'm looking forward to seeing Yeah, I want to say right around now I had, uh, I had most of my story already written up at this point. You kind of already know at this point, like, where the game's going, so. Those are the easy ones, but there are some games where it's down to the wire that it's just like, man, it's a headache to put it out. Uh, we have more players than scholarships, says Stephen M. Um, right now it's Jabari, Johnny, Will, Clayton, um, Marcus, Mayan. Right trying to get this off the top of my head. Tennessee and Burris are going to be walk-ons again. But yeah, they're, not everybody's going to be on scholarship. There's going to be a couple guys who are just not sure yet. Still not sure if the scholarship's going to go to AJ if he comes back or not. Um, yeah. I don't have all the answers right now, unfortunately. It's just... Right now, there's just so many moving pieces that there's just, it's not that they're not telling me the answers, it's just, there's no answers yet. Still not sure what the roster is going to look like, who's going to be eligible, because, you know, obviously, if you're ineligible, you're just going to be a walk-on. So there's no known right now. Uh, what college basketball program did you grow up watching? UT Austin, my man. Texas Longhorns. That's where I went to school. Um, I grew up in Edinburgh, Texas, which is about about a five and a half hour drive to Austin. And even then, we had season tickets to the to the football games, not the basketball games. We went out to a couple. Um, so even then, man, every weekend we'd make the drive to go watch a game and then drive back the same night. So I've been a, a Texas Longhorns fan my whole life. Um, had a couple aunts who went to school there. My parents went to... Uh, my parents went to UTPA, which is now UTRGV, the Vaqueros, because that was right down the street from where I lived. Like, it was a five-minute walk to campus. Um, but even that's like within the UT system, so we've always been, we've always been fans. Tobias says I have a good friend just for remembering. Really? That's actually really cool. It's always good to see people from the valley. I'm not sick. I choked on my water right now. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Y'all ever just like been drinking water, you just choke on your water? Oh, man. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I love Edinburgh. I honestly, I don't go down there nearly as much as I would like to nowadays. Uh, when I moved to San Antonio, pretty much the majority of my extended family also moved to San Antonio. So we really don't visit very often. We really don't. But... But it was a good place to grow up. Not a big city, but it's safe. So, yeah, I love Edinburgh. But my family's been living in San Antonio for the past decade, I think. It's been about 10 years now. So, I'm kind of like, sometimes I tell people I'm from Edinburgh, sometimes I say from San Antonio. Because if I say Edinburgh, I have to also say like oh it's in South Texas but if I say San Antonio you know they have the Spurs and stuff like that so people know where it's at already it's just easier uh, when was the first time you ever heard of NMSC basketball I don't know when the first time I heard of NMSC because I do follow college basketball a lot so I've always known about them but the first time I really like actually 
Jesus. learned about NMSU, I guess, is when I was filling out my college bracket uh, for last season, actually, where I actually had them beating Auburn. Uh, obviously, it didn't work out, but I had them beating Auburn, and I had them pull up three. He is a torch. Um, yeah, I had them making it out of the round of 32 also, getting to the Sweet 16. Johnny McCants takes the fast break pass, lays it in, 51-15 Aggies. Out in front, Barnes, head fake, drives on McNair. So yeah, that's when I really did my research on them. But before that, I just knew about them. I didn't know anything about the history or anything like that. I knew they were also called the Aggies, so... Um, just right off the bat, I wasn't a New Mexico State fan because if you're just a Longhorns fan, any team that has Aggies, you you just don't like them. But obviously now, I appreciate the program for sure. It was just in my blood naturally to not like a, a school called Aggies, you know. It took some time to come around to it. Even like now saying I cover the Aggies, if I tell my friends or family or anybody, I make sure to preface that it's the New Mexico State Aggies, because I'm, I'm never going to cover the Texas a and Aggies, never. <laughs> I could get a job offer tomorrow, I wouldn't do it. McNair has got some size. He's 6'10 and big, big and wide. He is. Luckily landed Sean Williams. Out on top for Rice, reversing right side to Owens. Owens penetrates, feeds back to Rice. Rice, three Rice. Left side. No, no good. Rebound cleared by the Mustangs. Back to 51 to 16. Let me check with their free throw shot percentage. I mean, their shooting Kiss. percentages were on this. I'll check that at halftime here. Rice drives in the paint. Down nice find. Reverse layup is not good, but he's fouled. William McNair fouled. I want to see Will go up and dunk that ball, man. I've, I hear that all the time whenever I'm outside the locker room. I hear Jan saying, like, like go up stronger, you know? Obviously, he's a big dude. I really think it is just confidence that I think he needs to just really call for the ball this upcoming season because he's going to have mismatches. There are not a lot of guys in the whack with his size. I want to see him a lot more aggressive this second season. Comes back on for the Mustangs. Finishing strong. More free throw for McNair. Four seconds Protecting to go the pain and all half. that kind of stuff. Hey, I'm sure from now on you'll attempts. probably always follow the NMSU Aggies. Tobias says, yeah, for sure. And, for sure. Is not good. and honestly, Mustangs even more than that, I like to follow the players that I cover. Like, NMSU is cool. I'm still going to follow the program. But, like, I'm more so going to follow... You know, how's Trev doing in the NBA? Um, how's Yvonne doing overseas? Because I imagine that's where he's going to go. Stuff like that. Because those are guys I've actually like, gotten to know and built some relationships with. So I'm always rooting for them. Um, even like I was saying earlier, even with guys who transfer away, like Sean Williams and uh, Robert Brown, I'm rooting for them. I hope they everything turns out well for them. So that's kind of my thing. I really follow the players more than anything, but definitely I'll still follow the Aggies in general. Well, Bill, Big Will be on straight shooter. It's funny you say that, Stephen. Uh, Jabari Rice today went ahead and nominated him, actually. So I need to find out a time and date to make it work or anything. I'm going to reach out to the SID tomorrow. Uh, Charlie Hurley and see if he can set something up but the plan is to have Will be the guest for episode um, episode 6 uh, let's pause it really quick and just check out the shooting percentages so y'all can see what the first half percentages were uh, let's find this here first half Western New Mexico was shooting 20.8% crazy defense there by the Aggies. The Aggies were shooting 58%. Wow. Yeah. Just dominant performance in this one. Which you come to expect because it is an NAIA squad. But still, this was a pretty strong start to the season. Appreciate everybody for tuning in, by the way. We got six people tuning in live. We're doing this every night, guys, starting at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So I... I really well, appreciate y'all. Even those that are going to go back and watch this live, I mean, uh, on playback, the unedited version is going to be here on our website, so if you missed anything, you can go back and watch it. 
But uh, yeah, Stephen William McNair, hopefully guest for episode number six of Stray Shooter. And the episode with Jabari, which I wrapped up today, is going to be released this Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. So make sure to check it out, guys. It's going to be here on our YouTube channel. So subscribe, turn on post notifications um, so you can get notified whenever we release stuff or whenever we go live. But yeah, this interview with Jabari was, was phenomenal. I can't wait for y'all to see it. I think it might be my favorite interview I've done yet. I think I'm putting it above the one with Evan. It was it was so hilarious. So. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. About 20 minutes long. Ooh. So I was ready for that one. Oh, uh, you know it's going to work. You just know, once he bats you down, he's doing that little drop step. Usually very efficient with it. Didn't get it that time, but great footwork. Yvonne has really good footwork. Which you have to have, because he's not the tallest guy. Not the strongest, but just really smart down low. Still up by a sizable amount, 54 18. Mike Able to get to the free throw line, line a lot. Van Beacon. Van Beacon really crafty player. For Barnes. Barnes cut off by Sean Williams, but he hits the jumper. Nice shot there. So Western coming out a little more confidently on offense in the second half. Aggies at 54 20. The left angle, Buchanan brings it inside. Sean stops, five footer, not good. good. Run out of bounds, touch last by Yvonne. Yeah, so I want to say at this point my article was pretty much done. <laughs> I think it was. I don't remember how I wrote it, what I wrote about. But if it's a blowout like this, usually by the end of halftime, it's just a matter of adding like another paragraph or two about the second half. And then adding like the final stats. Because I've said it a couple of times, but um, a lot of people don't know. I'm submitting our stories for prank. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. Five minutes max after the game's over. That's when I have to have the full story already done, put online, put in print. That's why you guys, if you check the print newspapers, you don't see quotes. Because we don't talk to Jans or the players until maybe about 15 or 20 minutes after the game. Nice layup. Um, so by then, I have to get it in. Already. So games like these, I love games like these because I'm not stressing at this point. Like, I'm in a good spot. Um, Tobias Rodriguez, how hard would it would it be to get Yvonne on straight shooter? I don't think very hard, as long as he has a laptop. Um, I really prefer the players that have laptops. Jabari had a phone that we used today, and we had some problems. I don't know if it's because of the phone, but the only other time we had problems was with Evan, and he used his phone as well. So um, I prefer that somebody has a laptop. As long as they have that, we can make it work. Because uh, we're using StreamYard, that's the third-party service we're using. I mean, it's just as simple as clicking on the link and just joining the video session. But the mobile version isn't that great yet. So I don't know what Yvonne has, but the fact that he's overseas right now that he's back in Spain shouldn't be a factor, just as long as he's got good internet connection, he should be fine. But, um... Yeah, I've just been letting the players nominate each other. I just think it's kind of fun. Because I was picking everybody for Straight Shooter, the podcast, during the season. But I don't know. The guys are really enjoying getting to pick who, which one of their buddies gets uh, interviewed next. You know, so I've just been rolling with that. The hope is to interview everybody this off season because obviously we have plenty of time to get to everybody. So I don't know when we'll get to interview Yvonne, but hopefully soon. Good body control that time by Yvonne. Aggies up 60 to 20. And I was nice and traveling not to settle uh, for the jump shot. I feel for Yvonne, though, man. I know he uh, he gets a haircut like every week. Every time I interviewed him or talked to him. Dude has like the freshest fade on the side and everything. He gets the taper and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if he has the hookup for haircuts right now or not. Hopefully. Because uh, I know it can be rough, man. I actually had to go and drive to El Paso just to get my haircut last week. It was my first one in like a month and a half. That's why I've been wearing hats for all of my live streams. 
left and laying the ball so I'm good right now for another couple Danel. weeks. Danel. But yeah, it's a struggle out there, man. The Three-point land, the left corner shot not good, rebound cleared by Buchanan. Buchanan brings the Aggies back. Shun takes the top of the circle, drives right inside, around Sanders, shot not good, good late whistle, the foul called on Malik Sanders. Really selective with his shots and from Buchanan, his obviously foul. pass first type of guy, but... And now the Mustangs have three. He shot a pretty decent rate from the three-point line, I want to say, this year. He made one in this game already. We already saw that early on. But he had, he had a decent little, uh, little shot going on this year as he misses this free throw. Misses his first free throw. Sean had three points in the first half. Second one's up. Got it today. Go. Sixty-one to twenty. Sixty-one twenty. Aggies lead. Sanders brings the ball across the timeline for the Mustangs. Feed right side it goes to Hohenstein. Hohenstein top of the circle for Van Beekham. Van Beekham holding the ball now returns the ball to. The you just look at the rotating by New Mexico State. State. Like defensively, they're just so Robin. sound. You see Trev coming down and caving in, and then he starts to pick up the big man a little bit to prevent the little drop-off pass. You saw Sean rotating on the uh, perimeter. Really sound defensively, which obviously starts with the coaching staff, the way they've set everything up. Because, you know, that's Jans' MO. I'd say that's his biggest strength is defensively. Ball will come in bounds for New Mexico State. You can um, I was talking to Jabari today, and that was one of the first things that he said in terms of advice to the uh, to the new guys is just trust in Jans. Just he's always right. That's what Jabari was saying. He's never wrong. He's got to buy into the system. I mean, obviously, the results speak for themselves. Good little drop step there by Will. Again, appreciate everybody for tuning in, man. We're doing this every night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Hopefully everybody's staying safe right now with the pandemic, with... Not, there's not too much going on in, in Cruces right now. Luckily, it's been a lot of peaceful protests and stuff like that. But I don't know where y'all might be watching this. There's a lot going on in the world right now, man. I just hope everybody's staying safe. Um, speaking of protesting, I saw Tennessee was out there. Um, I don't know where in Cruces, but he was out there with some signs protesting today. So that, that was cool to see. And then I think uh, Jabari said he went out today also. Him and uh, Wilfred Lakai, Marcus Watson, and he just said whoever else is still in town. Deep three by Trev. Um, yeah, so I don't know where they where they went today, but um, they were out there today. So that's good to see, man. I just love when when uh, athletes in general aren't just restricted to to playing the game, you know. Like they're using their voice, they're using their platform, man. I respect that. Right side for Sean Williams. Williams drives on Sanders. Sanders call for the foul. Malik Tobias, has his Evan foul. said something similar about that. He said something like he wanted to do it his way, and then he trusted Jans and got better. Yeah. Yeah, Evan was a little stubborn, he said, also. That it took him a, a couple of weeks to, to really buy into it. Because the dude was was the top scorer at Utah. Like he was he was averaging, I think he ended up averaging less than 20, but at some point he was averaging 20 in the season. And, you know, New Mexico State didn't necessarily need that last season with all of its seniors, with all of its scores. They needed a, a real facilitator. Catch and shoot. And Evan did a good job, man. He's... To his credit, he swallowed his pride, you know, he, his stats took a hit, but I think he was really, really important to New Mexico State's success. There's a lot of games during conference play that they would not have won had he not been uh, eligible. 
Rice to put the ball in play from the right of the basket. Kyler Bird, shout out for tuning in, man. Feeling confident. Oh, what did I just miss right there? Let's see. I'm watching the replay on my phone right now. Oh, the lob off the inbound. Dirty. Uh, Kyler Bird, feeling confident that Trev will go in the second round. That's what I've been hearing. Um, I, w I would guess late second round. And even if he weren't to get signed, I would think he'd be pretty quick to get picked up by a team. At least get, you know, like a summer league look or something like that. So my guess right now would still be late second round. Obviously, I think the age is a big thing because, you know, a lot of guys like to draft, a lot of teams like to draft young. Um, Trev, in a lot of ways, is potential isn't as high as the other guys that are younger because, you know, he's more developed already. He doesn't have as much room to grow. But at the same time, like, like I said, he's a really solid scorer. He's a really solid defender. He's athletic. He's got good size because I think he can play the shooting guard spot. And if he's 6'6", playing the shooting guard spot, you know, that's great. I don't see why um, he wouldn't get drafted in the second round. Injuries, I think, won't be too big of a concern because he did come back and look really good. Nice little find. And he can do stuff like that, man. He's such a good facilitator, which I think is very underrated. For a lot, a large part of this season, he was leading the team in assists. He just does everything, man. He does everything. Doesn't have an ego to him. Doesn't need the ball in his hands. He's a really good team player. Obviously, the work ethic coming from all the JUCO schools, I think in the long run, that really helped him also. Yeah, that would be my guess, is that late second round still. Stephen M., hometown heat, sidebar, question mark? Uh, what is that referring to? I know the... The straight shooter segment, but what is that referring to? I've been loving doing hometown heat though. That's been so much fun. Uh, let me go grab another water bottle real quick. Yeah, I've been loving doing the uh, the hometown heat stuff. Man. I will say, guys, I don't want to spoil too much with this Jabari Rice interview. I feel like I might be. So I won't say the place that I brought up. But I finally named the place uh, on hometown. Yeah, the first time this whole year that we've actually had somebody eat at the place that I mentioned. he showed us last year was that when he gets the ball down low, he has a... Oh, you said sidebar in Edinburgh. Oh, okay. If I can provide some hometown heats. Oh, that's a good question. Mexican food for sure. I would say uh, El Zarape is a really good, like, taqueria type of place where they have really good Mexican food. Um, this one is a chain, but it's a Mexican food chain that I don't think really extends outside of Texas. Um, called El Pato, really good like fast food Mexican food, really greasy, but still still good. Um, nice. Did they count it? Oh, they didn't count it. Uh, Steven Trevino's restaurant. Is that in Edinburgh? I'm not, I can't picture that one. But there's so many Mexican restaurants. It's kind of like Las Cruces also. Because, yeah, there's so many good Mexican food places. Uh, Casa del Taco, which closed down in Edinburgh, but they still have other ones in the valley. So good, man. I'm going to pull up a photo right now of Casa del Taco so you guys can see just the, the beauty that is this hometown Mexican food. I'm going to show you this, and I want y'all to tell me, is there a place in Cruces that does it like this? Because if there is, I need to go there. I need to go there. Let me just pause it real quick. I promise we're not going to do this super long. I don't know if you guys can see it, if the camera is picking it up or not. Because, I, again, I can't see where I'm at on the screen. 
this food, man. This right here, is it too far away? I don't know. Hopefully, y'all can see it at some point here. This is a Botana plate, which is incredible, man. I don't know if y'all were even able to see what I just showed on my phone right now, but y'all can look it up. It's so good. Uh, what's the biggest difference between the Mexican food from Edinburgh and from Cruces? That's a good question. Uh, we definitely don't use any green chili. Uh, that's just not a thing in, in Edinburgh. Although I like green chili a lot. Like now I, I definitely like it. Um, but that wasn't really a thing in Edinburgh. Um, also, enchiladas. You guys do like like flat ones. I saw that because I went to. I'm blanking on which one it was. This is like the first day that I moved here. Like I had just gotten off the U-Haul. I unpacked all of my stuff, and I literally just looked up on Yelp like best Mexican restaurants. And I want to say it was either Roberto's or Si Senor. Um, I forget which one it was. But anyways, I went there and I ordered enchiladas, and it was. Um, they were flat, they were stacked, like pancakes almost. And it was really weird, because I asked my waiter, I was like, um, you know, I ordered, like, rolled enchiladas, and they were like, oh, you have to ask for it to be rolled. I was like, what? <laughs> I, I didn't know about that. Ooh, ooh, a little ankle breaker by Jabari. Um, yeah, I didn't know about that. And I like them now, like, I'll, I'll eat them, but that's definitely not something that's in good. Like, that was the first time I'd ever heard of that. Uh, so there's a couple differences. Xavier S. Eraldo Geraldo Jr., shout out for tuning in, man. I appreciate it, you're a new name. Uh, I live here in El Paso, and I like the Mexican food in Las Cruces better than here in El Paso. Interesting. I have not tried the Mexican food in El Paso. Um, I've been out there a decent amount of times. I'd say maybe like 20 times or so. But I have not actually sat down at a place. Actually, no, that's not true. Oh, what was the name of the place that I went to? I'm blanking on it. I'm going to have to look it up because it's going to bother me. But I went to this one place that was actually really good in El Paso that uh, my editor, Jason Groves, recommended to me. Because for those who don't know, uh, Jason Groves, the one who the guy who covers New Mexico State football, actually lives in El Paso. He doesn't live here in Cruces. Uh, what was the name? Andale. Andale Mexican Restaurant and Cantina. That place was... Really, really good. I actually like it a lot. Uh, but that's interesting that you're siding with Cruces. I think Evan said the same thing. I'm pretty sure that was one of the questions that we asked him. Was if he prefers uh, El Paso or Las Cruces Mexican food. Because, you know, he went to Utah. And he said Cruces. I don't think... Even if he did think it was El Paso, I don't think he would have said it. Because he lives here in Cruces now. On New Mexico State. So I feel like it just, and even if he did think it was El Paso, it was just not worth getting all the hate. But um, so I'll take his word for it. Out. Yeah, he went with Cruces also. To go in the game. I love El Paso, though. So CJ Lee's with six it, it's just, first you know, half. I'm just a Texan, so I'm always going to be biased towards Johnny a place McCann's in Texas. State. But, um, but I, honestly, really I've loved Las Cruces here. I've been here for... Pretty much exactly a year. I think exactly a year. My lease ends this month, so I just renewed it for another year. Nice find. You see, that right there is exactly what I'm looking for out of Rain with me. Just do the one little hop and then go up strong with the dunk. You don't really see that a lot with Roe. He didn't have too many dunks this year. He didn't go near, he didn't go up nearly as strong as like Robert Brown does. And I really think that's that's one of the things I want to see more out of him this year. McCants left the lane Rice down low to Robert Brown skip past right side Tennessee Owens and it trades feeds back to Sean Williams Off there it is Tennessee Owens got it away. yes first Tennessee bucket Owens. as an Aggie first basket as an Aggie yep I remember that I showed that clip to, uh, to Tennessee for straight shooting Tobias Rodriguez he says Xavier I agree I lived in El Paso for a while and like the Mexican food right better increases 
Yeah, for my limited El Paso experience, I would I would give it to Cruces as well. Like I I love Cisneros. Right Down low baseline right for Robert Brown. Brown double team feeds back now to Sean Williams. Left of the lane, Tennessee Owens. Owens. 50 point game here, folks. Rice. Rice comes down the lane. Layup is good. It's how do you oh, get that, Mark? Just pure athleticism. Oh, that's that's something that he must have learned uh, on the, uh, at the playgrounds in, uh, in Houston. Obviously, he can still, he can still fill control. out a bit more. By two guys, scored get the stronger, but you can even see. He put in the work. Side, picked up by Owens. Feeds back outside to Van Beekham, now back to Leonard. And I don't see why he can't be all whack first team again. I don't. He got it this year, <clears throat> and I'd say he's the top scorer, scoring option for this upcoming season. I give him a little bit of an edge above Johnny. Yeah, man, he's, he's something else. Aggie victory. Jabari Rice walks the ball in the front court with 6.40 to go in this first half. The right corner, the ball it's still to tough. I get a lot of people asking me if I feel like he might um, get whack player of the year. I just think with New Mexico State's system, it's really hard to get a whack player of the year because it's so much based on pretty much who's the leading scorer who gets the most buckets. Um, and just New Mexico State doesn't really have a system where it's one scoring option. I, I expect Jabari to be the top scoring option, but I think it's still going to be really Walk tough on, for anybody on the team to average more than like 14, 15 points. And you look at last season, Terrell Brown for Seattle was averaging 20, and Milan Aqua was around there also. Um, you just don't really see that a lot with the Aggies. But, but I mean, the potential is there. Like, Jabari is as good as any player in the last that's coming back next year. There's no question about that. It's just a matter of it. if his stats are going to be able to compare. Tennessee Owens will be the point guard. 79-32. We'll see, man. We'll see. Owens, McCants, Raywald, McNair, and Williams. And then Johnny, without a doubt, should get on an all-whack team because he didn't this past year. And I think he had a pretty decent case. Pretty decent case run. There were a lot of good guys this year. McCants three straight on. Ooh, no good. But I think Johnny was at least in the conversation for all-whack second team. And um, now coming back, I don't see why he can't. At least Robert get all that check on team. for Johnny McCants. Sports information directors coordinate public relations, website, social media, statistics, and much more. Strategic communicators for the college and the university athletic departments. SIDs for today, tonight's game is Chris Kennedy of New Mexico State. Thanks for all you do in supporting your student athletes, coaches, and institution. Thank you, Chris. For more information, contact cosida.com slash thank your SID. Aggies up 79-32. I wish there was a way to actually Holyfield. rename Holyfield like... Not good. Down low by Sean this live stream and do all that kind of stuff here through Tennessee my phone. Owens in the front court. Owens, right of the lane for Because I can't do that right here. I don't know what the live. I don't even think there's a title for this right now. <laughs> for those that are watching this right now, I apologize. Like I would like to add the thumbnail and everything. I'm gonna have to do that once this live stream is over. Sean Williams with seven tonight. Aggies 81. Western 32. I'm just glad that the live stream is working though. We haven't had any problems with it, so that's good. That was my main concern. Looks like everything has been good. Coming back on now for the Mustangs is George Mosialos. And Ray will put the ball in bounds from the left baseline into Sean Williams. Williams goes to his right, gets the ball to Tennessee Owens. Owens takes a dribble, and as he tries to penetrate, the whistle stops playing. A foul is called on Eligante. Oh, okay. Rodriguez I was trying to find out what the call was. Foul then. for the Mustangs. Rodriguez, seven foot two, and all man. So up next after foul this is one, the seventh on the Mustangs. It's a one and one. What Utah? I believe. And like I said, guys, not all the games. Are available, unfortunately. Oh, so I'm gonna see right now which ones are available. This is the this is where I've been finding all the film, by the way. So whenever you guys see me using game film for like a new player that's coming in or anything like that, or even this right now what I'm watching, the channel is NM Aggie Athletic Archive. 
And once this live stream is over, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the description so you guys can go and show them some love. They have about 225 subscribers, but honestly, if you're an Aggie fan, you need to be subscribed to them. Like, they need to have a lot more subscribers. They do basketball. They do football videos as well. So, yeah, you guys definitely need to go subscribe to them. Um, but let's see what their next game that they have is. Do they have the UTEP one? We shall find out right now. Yes, they do. Okay. So tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time is going to be the game against UTEP that was on the road, which I did go out and actually travel for. So I went to that one. Shot at three by Bryce Rim out, man. I did a story on Bryce in Tennessee, like right after this game. And Bryce is telling me it felt good. That shot, he felt like it was online. Just rattled out, though. It was not meant to be. Tennessee got on the board, though, in this game, so that's cool. But yeah, tomorrow night's going to be New Mexico State versus the UTEP game. Uh, Tobias asked, what was your favorite game of the past season? I'll probably say... I'll probably say the Cal Baptist game. Just because the atmosphere was insane, like the energy, they used the full senior starting five, like every single bucket, people were going crazy for it, and obviously just everything went right that game for the Aggies. So I'd probably say that one, Utah Valley is a close second, just because that's the craziest game that I've covered for sure, with the game winner. Yeah, it's probably those two. McNair bear that one. Be by Williams. William McNair. And I think they get it back to him, don't they? Doesn't he get it here? Yeah, he gets the board. Okay, I don't know if he gets the bucket here. I feel like he does. I don't remember fully. They're looking for him. They're looking for him! Yes, sir. Great. He just knew. Sean Williams had the ball there, and he knew. Like, Will has to finish this, finish this playoff. Man. Okay, so if I do end up interviewing Will tomorrow, or next week, I'm showing that whole sequence now. Because that is just the block, the hustle to get back and get the offensive board and then the finish, man. That honestly wraps up his whole game. So I'm going to show him that clip for sure. What time of the video is this at? A minute, eight seconds. Cool. <laughs> Well, I found one of the clips I'm going to have him break down. Mm, nice shot by Sean. Uh, Xavier says, the Pan Am is like Oracle. It's loud, great atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, it is. It doesn't, it doesn't get packed as, as often unless they do like pack the Pan Am. But I will say that those who do show up are really active fans. Like, it's not just people sitting around and and being quiet the whole time. Like, everybody is, you can hear everybody, everybody's screaming. So, yeah, it's a good environment, man. Great hustle by Will there, too. You got free throws on that. I remember that. I think he goes two for three here, I want to say. Because I want to say he had five this game. Five or seven. Bryce Raywald, We've got the box for you. He had seven in this game. Yeah, I apologize if I'm off on a couple of these stats. I'm really going off of, like, pure memory unless I go back and actually look at it. So, that's why for this month-long series, you guys will hear me say, like, roughly about around stuff like that so don't quote me on it a lot of it is just whatever I remember from something that was months ago so <laughs> not going to be completely accurate and you see I was wrong there because he got all three I thought he got two Right the 91 Robert to 40. Brown. This Back game is winding down. This has been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to to watching all these games, man. I hope you guys have been enjoying this this live stream, or if you're going back and watching this. If you are, please leave a like. 
it really helps this channel grow. Um, please subscribe. We're really trying to get these numbers up. And uh, just make this a go-to place for content for the next year's day. We've got our, our web series. During the season, we'll have our podcasts. Um, any press conferences via Zoom or anything like that, we'll have that as well. I interviewed Nick Gonzalez, actually, uh, two days ago. So I'm going to be putting out an article about, you know, where he might go in the MLB draft, uh, what he brings to the table, stuff like that. And I did a Zoom interview with Nick. So the article will get published on our site, and then the video will also be on, on YouTube. So, like, anytime I interview somebody, you guys are going to see it here. Anytime there's a press conference with Coach Jans or with a player after a game, you guys are going to see that here. I do my own little uh, game videos for these games, like this one right here that I was at for Western New Mexico. I made a little, like, two or three-minute video as well. Those are going to get updated or published here on the site. So, just a lot of content, man. I hope you guys subscribe, and I hope you're enjoying it so far. Uh, Tobias says... Uh, thank you. This was a good idea. I'll log in and view when I can. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. Tennessee has what I would call a full beard. His next free throw is not good. Cleared by Rodriguez. 25 seconds to go in this game. Okay, so there was that missed free throw from Tennessee that I was remembering. The Mustangs is not good by McDonald. Goes out of bounds. Is this Aggie's ball? Western. No. 20.8 seconds left. We are winding down here. That's a shoot. Got it. And that is the final score, I believe. 92 to 46. Aggies improved to 1-0 on the season. And then tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, we'll watch the game against Utah. So I hope to see you guys there. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're done here. Finals, 92-46. I'm going to go ahead and just read off the stats really quick so y'all can uh, see how everybody did. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. The leading scorer was Jabari Rice, who had 21 points. 21 points in this one, man. Three assists and a rebound. On seven, or not on seven, not on six for nine shooting. Uh, there were a lot of double digit scores. We also had Trevor and Queen with 14 points. We had both Yvonne and Sean Williams with 10 points. We had William McNair with 11 points. What else do we got here? The Aggies shot 54.5% from the floor. While Western New Mexico shot 28.6%. And yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it. Should I go ahead and... Uh, let me see real quick. I think what I'm going to do after these games, I'm also going to pull up the article that I wrote and just give you guys some quotes from the team so you guys can get a little refresher on what they were saying afterwards. I want to say we interviewed Jabari after the game for this one. I think so. So let me go ahead and find that. But this is fun though, man. This is a lot of fun. Let's see, where is that article at? Yeah, I can't find it right now. <laughs> All right, so I'll have that pulled up for the next game. We'll make that a regular thing also. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. We got it. We got it. All right, so quotes from the game. Here's head coach Chris Shans after the game. He said, I thought for the most part our guys handled the situation pretty well. We kept telling them, play against the game, play for the video, play to get better and not get caught up in the score. That's probably the brightest spot for me. So they handled it in a mature way. And then Jabari Rice, we did end up talking to him um, on his career night. This was a career high for him in points. And he said, um, it's pretty good. I like it, but I'm not satisfied. I could have played better on defense a little bit more. Um, I could have passed the ball a little bit better, but I am happy that I'm better than last year for sure. That's what you like to hear, man, out of a young player is that, you know, they're not satisfied. So now that is going to do it, guys. 
Thank you so much, everybody who tuned in. Stephen M. says, another great show. Love the content. I appreciate you, Stephen. Appreciate all of you guys. Um, episode 5 of Stray Shooter with Jabari Rice is going to get published on Wednesday here on our channel and on the Las Cruces Sun News website. So go ahead and support local journalism and subscribe to the paper there. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. You guys do not want to miss that one. It's going to be fantastic. But I am out of here for tonight, guys. This has been Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jada Sports Dude. Hope everybody is staying safe. And I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow night. I'm out.